Hello YouTube land, it's Debbie from the Canadian Crotcheter. I posted a video yesterday of the hats that I've been making and I'm still in the midst of trying to answer everybody. I really do love answering everyone. It's just a matter of trying to find time. But one of the things that quite a few of you have asked for is a, some sort of a tutorial or a pattern that, that I follow for my toques. And I don't have a pattern. Um, I learned how to do these a lot when I first started making hats. So um, I just spent the last hour creating a little tutorial to show you all how I make my hats and pom-poms. Uh, the quality is not the best. I do apologize. I ain't no Krista from The Secret Yarnery who I think has amazing tutorials or Mikey from The Crochet Crowd. I. I don't do tutorials, so the quality is not the best, but I think that people that are requesting the tutorials will get the idea of what I'm trying to show you. So I, I spent the last hour making this little toque, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it, um, and hopefully it's understandable. Um, uh, just know that I am trying. I'm not equipped to do a tutorial, so it's extremely difficult to be looking through the camera and trying to crochet at the same time and uh, without taking, you know, 10 takes, which I didn't. I'm not a very good editor, so I just kind of wing it and do it and put it out there for you guys to um, watch. Um, so hopefully there won't be any bad comments. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to show you how I do my toques and I hope you enjoy it and hopefully it answers some of the questions and we'll talk soon. Alright, let's try this. First of all, I'm going to try to go slow so for any uh, really new crocheters. Okay, so first of all, you have your yarn. I'm using very chunky yarn. I think it's a 6 and a 10 millimeter hook. Alright, so First of all, you need to make a slip knot. So the way I do it is I just flip it over like that, and then inside that loop, I grab the tail, pull it through like that, and then put it on the hook, tighten it. All right. Now I've talked about mm, the length or the amount of chains that you need, but for this case, we're going to make let's say we'll do 20. Two, one. You yarn over and just pull through the loop yarn over, pull through the loop. I apologize for the quality, I am not good at this. So that's three, yarn over, pull through, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We'll do a little hat or a smaller hat. So now you have your chain. So <clears throat> you always add one at the end for your turning. And then to do, we're going to do half double crochets. So half double crochets is yarn over, insert into the first or the second, second chain from the hook. You insert grab a loop, pull it up, now you have three on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. That's your first half double crochet. And we're going to do that all the way to the end to get to. So you yarn over, insert into the next chain, pull up a loop, you got three, yarn over, pull through all three. So we're going to do that, we're going to move a little faster now. Uh, we're going to do that all the way to the end, so you get to three stitches before, before the end. All right, let's, uh, and it will curl like this. Just straighten it out. All right, okay. I am very, very new to uh, doing tutorials, but I really wanted to show you all, so many of you have asked for it, so I really wanted to show you how I make my toques. And there are other videos, probably much better videos than mine, so you might, uh, I might leave a link for that as well. But it's really, really basic, simple stuff. Okay, let's see, we're getting close. Okay. So when you get to 
three stitches. So one, two, three, oh, I got one more, four. All right, when you get to this, you want to do not half double crochets. You can do half double crochets uh, if you find it easier. Uh, but I find that it creates a lot of bulk when you go to cinch the hat. So what I do is the last three stitches at the top of the hat, and I always know it's the top of the hat because that's where the tail is, I will do single crochet. So you insert your hook without yarning over, pull up a loop, you have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. So the last three stitches will be single crochets, and that just creates a little less bulk when you go to cinch it. So there we go, we have our first row done. And then I always chain one to do the turn. And there's your turn. Now, we're gonna do, because this is the top of the hat, we're gonna do three single crochets. So you go into the first, but only the back loop. So normally, you would go through that, both loops, as you can see, there's two loops on there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the back loop. If, you, if it's facing you and you're looking at the V, you're going to go in the back loop. So, and then you grab up yarn, pull it up, and you got two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through both. And then, so another one, the back loop, pull up, pull through. Okay, um, and then the third one, same thing, and then pull up. Now we're going to do the half double crochet. So half double crochet all across. So again, you yarn over, put it through in the back loop only. Pull up three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to go a little faster now because I'm assuming everybody knows how to do this. Oh, darn. All right, let's try this again. All right. And we go to half double crochets all the way. I am struggling with looking through the camera and crocheting. It's really quite difficult. I, my hat's down, or hands down to all those um, YouTubers that can do tutorials because this is not easy. Alright, so I apologize to any newbies. I will leave a link for a better tutorial. Other people have done it much, much better than I can. So, we go all the way to the end, and that's going to be the bottom of the hat, so, or, the, or you know, the part that goes around the head. So, okay, now when you get to the end, it looks like you might be running out of room, but you actually have two stitches there, one, two. So we want to work in both. Half double crochet, and then in the last one, half double crochet. And then what I do, I always just chain one to uh, create the height, and then you turn, and we do half double crochets in the first um, stitch back loop only. Sorry about my dogs, there's somebody outside. And then we go back across, exactly like that. And you just keep going back and forth um, until you get to the the uh, circumference that you're looking for. So when you get to the end here, remember to do three single crochets in the back loops only and half double crochets everywhere else. And I'm going to keep doing this and I'll come back to you when I have, now my head's a little small so uh, I have an 18 inch circumference so I will make the hat uh, a 17 inch circumference just to make it a little tighter. Um, but yeah, so I'll get, I'll Come back when I have the 17 inches, and then we'll show you how to seam it up. Okay, before we go on, I want to show you how I do my measuring. You're all going to think I'm crazy, and you're going to laugh, which I hope that you do laugh. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you how, you, a lot of times I'm sitting in front of the TV or, or, or uh, somewhere, and I don't have my tape measure. I'm not a very organized person. My tape measures are all over the place. So what I do is make my chain, and then I go from the top of my head down to, and I think, okay, this is enough to fold over. Good enough. So that's how long my chains are. I don't follow any recipe or anything like that. So that's what I do for the chains. And then when I do, 
when I finish my panel, your panel will look something like that. And to measure the circumference, you're gonna laugh. I do this. Hold on. I do this, and if it reaches the back of my head, then I know it's good enough for me. If I'm making it for somebody else, I would add an extra roll because, as I've said many times, I have a freakishly small head. So that's what I do. That's what I do. I just measure around, and if it reaches, and I'm doing it for somebody else, add another roll, and then I know it's going to fit. So now we'll go on to seaming this. We're going to seam it like this. Really easy. So we'll see you soon. All right, the panel, my panel is done. Um, as you can see, it's a little more, just slightly more narrow at the top, and that's to create less bulk when I cinch it. Uh, you absolutely do not have to do that. You can absolutely just do half double crochet, rows and rows of half double crochet in the back loops only. Done. A good little tip is when you're done with your panel to try to end at the brim level uh, or brim end so that when you go to seam it, so you're going to be going back along here, uh, your tail that you finish or that you're, that you're going to cut will end up on the top so it's easier to bury. I mean, it's not the end of the world if your tail is over here, you're just going to have to seam it on this side or bury it. Um, in there but it's easier if you end up if your last stitch is here then you seam and you end up there so uh, this is how I seam all right now Margaret Olander gave me a good tip and I used to struggle with seaming but she said always chain one and that gives you that room to play with the yarn so basically you will take it and you will poke it in the corner. Actually, I'm not that particular, but anywhere in the corner, yarn over and slip stitch right through. Okay, so then you will just go to the next stitch and find the corresponding hole on the other side. Pull it through, pull it through. And you're gonna do that all the way across. Uh, again, I'm not that particular, I think that thick yarn is very forgiving. It does not it hides a multitude of sins or mistakes. And you just slip stitch all the way across. When we get there, I'll show you how to finish off your hat or your toque. Okay, really quick. As you can see, I'm just speeding right through it. All right. You go through the loop in the front, find the corresponding hole in the back, in the other side of the panel, and pull it through. Really, really easy. All right, and then essentially your toque will be done. Just have to cinch it and add a pom-pom if you like. You could leave it without a pom-pom, but I'm going to show you how, to, how I do my pom-poms. Now, I didn't have a name for the pom-poms, but one of you viewers just nicknamed it the Shaggy Pom-Pom. So I'm going to adopt that. I'm going to call it my Shaggy Pom-Poms. All right, so you get to the end, and this is what your seam looks like. But you will be turning it inside out, so... Well, ah, look at that. Okay, not going to worry about that. It's, not, it's just a loose stitch. Not going to worry about it. It's for me anyway. But I guess if I was... That particular I'd go back and take this out tighten up this uh, stitch and be done but we're not gonna do that now all right so you get to the end and then you will yarn over and pull through probably I don't know 12 inches or so you probably get away with less than that and you snip the end pull that out and then you have if you pull it inside out your toque Essentially is done minus that loose stitch there um, Anyway, so you have that then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take sorry, but the noise you're gonna take a nice big needle and you're going to thread Thread come on thread your yarn and you're just gonna go in and out around the posts or anywhere you can stick your needle in just like that. 
Okay, so in and out. And start pulling. In and out. Start pulling. In and out. So you get all the way around. Really easy stuff. All right, I think this is the last one. And then you just cinch. Cinch, cinch, cinch. And you're essentially, you're done. Okay? Then you're going to just weave back and forth to close it. Anywhere you can stick your needle in. Cinch. Come on. And then what I do is I will poke the needle into the middle and then just for safety's sake, this is your tail from the beginning of the project. Let's see if we can do this. This is your tail from the beginning of the project and this is your tail from the end of the project. You don't need your needle anymore. I just tie these two together nice and tight. Maybe three knots. That way it's not going. So the front of the hat or the beginning of the hat and the end of the hat are tied together. You can take these ends, weave them in, but I'm not going to. Snip it and essentially your hat is done. You can flip the brim over. There, your hat is done. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I do my pom-poms. I do have the pom-pom makers and I do use them sometimes, but a lot of times they're put away or something, so I just grab whatever's near me. Let's say I just bought this Charles Bronson three movie disc for the cottage and uh, I could use that. So all you do is you just wrap, 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 wrap. Um, that's for a big pom-pom. But a lot of times my hook case is with me all the time. So this is what I use <laughs> most times. So you just hold it. Oh, come on. Just hold it and then wrap, 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 wrap. And you wrap and just like go to town. Um, yeah, you just keep wrapping. And a lot of times I'll go right, to, if it's a smaller skein, I'll go right to the end of the skein. And, uh, but we'll just, I don't count. I just kind of eyeball it and think, okay, that looks puffy enough. And that's where I'll stop. Let's see. Okay. All right, that looks a good, about now. Okay, so then, put down, I cut it. Then I cut a piece, maybe two feet long or something like that, and that'll be the tie. And now what I do is I just slip it off like that, grab it in the middle, essentially the pom-pom, and then, let's see, then you just wrap this couple of times maybe three two three whatever you whatever yarn you've got and then I'll just tie it and then really pull tight not not tight enough that you break the yarn because then you'll be swearing but just put a couple of knots in there like that And that's what you have. So then I grab a hold of the the yarn. This will be the yarn that you use to attach it to the hat. And then start snipping those loops. Um, I'm sure everybody remembers making these in grade school. Um, yeah. And oh, I got stuck. Okay, so you just look for the loops and snip, snip, snip. That's all there is to it. Okay, let's see any other loops in there. Oh, there's one there. If you miss a loop, I'm sure it's not the end of the world. Snip, snip, and you don't have to be exact because you want it to be kind of floppy and shaggy. And uh, so you don't have to be that exact. Just snip it wherever. And you snip the loops. Done, okay. So then, 
you know, you could leave it, absolutely you can leave it like that. But I do do a little bit of trimming. So I'll just trim so that there's no extreme wayward ones like that. Essentially, that's done, pretty much. You can snip, you can keep snipping if you want it to look neater, or you could um, just leave it as is, and I choose to leave it as is. And then, because one of the things when making pom-poms that breaks my heart is when you're making the pom-pom and you're snipping, there's so much wasted yarn, <laughs> and I always think to myself, oh my goodness, I paid for that. But this is all you get, so. That's not too bad. Anyway, so there's my pom-pom. And then, let's move this to the side. Oh, now you're gonna need your needle back. And I will show you how to attach it. You basically take your needle, oops. There we go. And then you kinda look at the top and you kinda do opposite ends. Now, if you do it right in the, sorry. Oh. Again, I'm really bad with this. If you do it right in the middle, your pom-pom will be floppy. So what I do is I kind of go out, here's your middle. I go out a little bit, just pull it through, pull your needle, get your other, sorry, my dog Zeus wants to come in and I won't let him in, so he's not happy. Anyway, then, so you see, this is where the needle or the yarn, the first yarn came, went in. And then I'll just do opposite that, but a little farther away from the center so that it does not, it's not floppy. And you just pull it through and then you take your, your needle off. And then you grab hold of both, both threads that are going in there. And you flip your hat inside out. So now you see that if you, if you give it a little bit of distance, it'll make it a little sturdier. Now what I do is tie, just do a little tie, then like a, a bow tie, done. There you go. There you go. Your hat is done. There you go. Then I gotta go back and fix that somehow. <laughs> anyway, your hat is done. It's quick, it literally, um, I mean, this whole tutorial took me an hour to do. Um, so, like an hour, and if you're a little slower, maybe a little longer, but really manageable. You can crank a whole bunch of them out and play with the colors, play with the different size pom-poms, and uh, make great little gifts. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. And, again, I do apologize for the video quality. I am not a tutorial maker, but I'm trying. Um, anyway, hopefully... You enjoyed this and we'll talk soon.